Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In the previous episode, we launched Camden Kerman into orbit on a very, very flawed launch, but we still made it. And the plan was to have him dock with another Kerbal in orbit. So we we're going to do a Kerbal orbit rendezvous. However, I have since reconsidered that, especially because the food situation is a little bit tight. We've already had him spend almost an hour out here. And unfortunately, we had 17 days worth of food, water, and oxygen, but now, uh, because of a mishap due to an SRB, I think, or some sort of, um, some sort of miscalculation on my part. Anyway, um, definitely a miscalculation on my part. They, uh, he now has only one day's worth of food, water, and oxygen. So, I've thought about it and there are a number of possibilities we can look into. The first is the more interesting one. So I'm just going to mention that one and skip the other one. The other one was going to be uh, having him do the mission with the uh, with another Kerbal and then we could also just bring him straight down. But the more interesting one and the one I'm most eager to talk about is the possibility of docking him with an unmanned probe that brings up some food, water, and oxygen. And also some liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. In, if we can bring him some food and some fuel for this stage, we could potentially bring him to a, lo a lunar flyby. But, but, there are a few flaws. First of all, we don't have Ullage rockets on this stage. Uh, I think it's because either I forgot them, uh, there was a lot of adjustments in the previous episode, or, more likely, they got blown off because of the new aerodynamics from Ferrum Aerospace. Thank you, Ferrum Aerospace. Uh, they should have been blown off anyway, so I don't blame Ferrum Aerospace. It was, it's true. They, they shouldn't have been there. Um, so we've got that problem. So we can't settle the fuel flow, except we've still got Ullage rockets. We've still got rockets, not Ullage rockets. They were supposed to be launch escape slash retro burn rockets on the capsule itself. One of the three, uh, actually it's six, right, uh, on the other side as well. But one set was uh, destroyed by the aerodynamic forces. The other two are still here though, and that's enough to provide enough enough of a boost to settle down the fuel flow for this stage. Um, interestingly enough, I noticed that the fuel flow is already very stable. By the time we dock with uh, the unmanned probe though, it might not be. So, so yeah, we've got some resources to work with here, but we can always bring him back down. I'm going to set a limit. I'm going to say that if Tag Life Support tells us that we've only got three hours left for him uh, on the food, water, and oxygen, we should bring him back down at that point. But for now, if we can get some food, water, oxygen, and as well as that uh, hydrogen and oxygen for the fuel, maybe we can send him to the moon. So that's the plan this time. We're going to see if we can send Camden Kerman to the moon on the flyby. <laughs> And you can be sure he's excited about that prospect. Let's go back to VAB. And cook up that probe. Okay, we'll use the same launcher, but I want to check things out and fix things here. So, we've got a little bit of a problem. These, these little Alage rockets aren't good. Fortunately for us, we've got these now. Uh, they're a little bit heavier. They're a lot heavier, actually. That's a that's a downside. But maybe maybe there's just no avoiding that now. I don't really see a neat option to avoid the aerodynamic issues that these pose. Well, we could put cones on them. I wonder if uh, I wonder if Far will be okay if I put a cone on top. Let's find out. So, what will be the lightest cone? Let's go with this cone. Ooh, 
but it's big right now. Obviously we can't use a preset cone because they're all going to be too big for this particular purpose. And so I'm going to use the same launcher for the unmanned probe and that's why I'm trying to get it all set up nice and see if this option works or not. I don't know. We'll find out. Better to do an unmanned thing than another manned mission. So at least there's that. Another benefit to doing an unmanned mission is to make sure, absolutely sure, that our satellite network really is okay and that we're not going to have any issues thanks to the update. Oh, that's an interesting thing. These guys have their node up like really high. Hmm. What could I do to fix this? Maybe I should just uh, maybe I should just rely on RCS instead of the solid. I think I think the the new engine igniter. I I've, I'm pretty sure I got it updated. I think the new engine igniter will be all right with uh, using RCS to do the to the knowledge stuff. So maybe I should just copy some RCS ports to the third stage like this. Now here's the thing, we don't really need to worry about adding a tank of liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen to the probe part because we'll just be emptying the third stage into the third stage of the Asimov 2. So that'll be alright. And hydrazine, MMH, Anyway, this uh, we'll we'll be adding hydrazine in is what we'll be doing. We'll have a different probe there instead of the service module and upper portion. Okay. Now this this posed some problems. What I think is we should dump this one and move these over. So that they'll be shielded by the. Okay, well, let's not do angle snap. So they'll be shielded by the parachutes from the aerodynamic forces. Like that. These were already apparently well shielded, so no problem there. Hopefully. So if necessary, these can provide the knowledge requirement for the third stage. If not, Oh well. Okay. So I think this will be more proper than we had. Do you notice I fixed the launch clamps already? Everything should be good. Alright, let's save that. And now we're going to hold on to the new Forsetti. Let's save that as a sub-assembly. Let's dump this one. Obviously what we need is a probe core. This one seems to have less electric charge requirements, so I'll just go with that. So we have a probe core. And then we also need a docking port. Very important. Just put it out at the top there. Yeah, that's not too bad, is it? Okay. Then under, then underneath this, what we really need is, uh, oh, we need food. Food is very important. Where would food be? Should be, no, that's science. Life support container. So what's going to happen is actually the, the probe core Oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, we should have the docking port like this. Uh, I know what I'm going to do. No, tiny decoupler, please. And then the life support bundles. 
right. How much is that? 10? Oh, let's give him 20. There. See, now that's brilliant. Okay, and then we need hydrazine. Lots and lots of hydrazine. Oh, and maybe... Maybe a reaction control wheel. Should we put it on top? Looks like it'd be better on top. Okay. Okay, this is a normal fairing race ring. How much hydrazine can we fit in this tank? 500. Let's go with just 500 square. We need communication apparatus. These now have 5,000 kilometers. That's good. Let's go with Commutron. This one. And let's get angle snap back. And... No, the other way. So again, we're gonna basically be testing our communication network to make sure it's still alright. And let's get some real solar panels on here. Battery power wouldn't be amiss. Let's put that at the... Well... No, we can add that to the tank. Electric charge. Some of the panels that are always open. Okay, that should do fairly well, hopefully. I guess there's no point in not putting more solar panels. Uh, unless it clips. Okay, let's change the texture just for my sanity. Okay, that looks fine. Now we're using the third stage to actually carry up the... I mean this, this probe obviously does not need the Forsetti to get up to anywhere. But because we're using the third stage to carry the fuel with for us, we actually need to have the third stage with us. Uh, no, that did not go the way I wanted it to. Oh, that really didn't. Mostly this is going to be the target. It's not actually going to make the rendezvous. It's actually the pod that's going to make the rendezvous. I'm tempted to put some sort of other engine, but of course with this here, there's no way I could add something very easily. But perhaps maximizing, uh, putting more hydrazine might not be a bad idea. Okay, that's good enough. There's no decoupler here, but actually there doesn't need to be a decoupler here. This all goes together. Really the only part that needs to be decoupled is up front here. seems a little bit wide. Uh, not bad. Alright, let's get the fairings on. Not conic. Okay, this should uh, be interesting. So now we've got our target for the rendezvous. And let's call it, well, let's call it Refueler, I guess we'll just call it Refueler on the Force City. Four. A good descriptive name. A 
Let's time this launch. Let's go to the tracking station. You know what? By some minor miracle, it looks like this is the right time to launch. Doesn't it? I mean, uh, we're, we're at the orbit. I guess... Yeah, it looks like the Asimov 2474 is actually at the diametrically opposite point of the planet from where Cape Canaveral is. You can see that here. So yeah, it's time to launch. Let's get to it. Okay, it's another nighttime launch, but we have to be primarily concerned about the food situation for our Kerbal up in orbit, and so we don't really want to waste any time, even though I'd rather avoid a nighttime launch. SAS is on, throttle is up. Our launch clamps should be configured properly this time. And even if they're not, we'll get to orbit. But let's let's try and keep this on the straight and narrow this time, shall we? Uh, actually, speaking of which, it'll be helpful if uh, Smart ASS is helping out here. Because then I can keep all the turns nice and nice and smooth. I'll pre-program it for 85. Okay, throttle is up, everything is a go. Some space for the rocket, maybe. Sorry, it's all crowded with all these screens. Well, it's a nighttime launch anyway, so it's not going to be too much to look at. Alright. Um, oh, right. Let's set target. Why not? I think we just go 90 degrees. It should be that if we just head 90 degrees, we'll have the same thing. Is that right? Seems strange, actually. Uh, Alright, I think that'll be my plan and we'll see how it works out. One thing I don't have here is target, anything to do with the target, so... Oh well. Let's go! Okay, liftoff is good and we've cleared the tower. Okay. Solid boosters are away. Starting the first bit of our turn. I should really program the roll as well. I don't really need it to do any roll, but oh well. Taking a look at my dynamic pressure, considering the aerodynamics caused problems last time. A little bit slow to get to Mach 1. I I think I should rotate more next time. Got a lot of wiggles. Still increasing in dynamic pressure. Okay, looks like we reached max Q at about 12,000 feet, uh, 12,000 meters.
and nothing blew up this time. But of course we ditched those Ulrich rockets. Uh, we seem to be deviating quite a lot. Um, uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh, wow. Ooh, off. Okay. I'm gonna... Ooh. Hmm. Okay, I think it's safe to say that uh, we've lost that, and I'm probably gonna skip using Smart ASS next time. Okay, I don't even know what the bits we still have on here are, but it's just all over the place. This is new. Thank you, Far. <laughs> anyway, uh, alright, let's try this, and I'll have uh, better gimbling on the rockets. Maybe I'll still try Smart ASS to keep things nice and smooth. I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. What am I looking at? Oh. Is that... Uh, oh, it is the payload. Go figure. Anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to increase the gimbling in the VAB. Let's just uh, revert this. Well, it looks like we can't take things for granted anymore. Uh, no more... Uh, Primrose path for us. Uh, aerodynamic hammers have been, have been, whatever happens to hammers thrown. So I think three degrees of gimbling should be enough. Funny that we have this problem, but all right. All right, once more. Okay, this is, yep. Let's keep our life support visible. Most important thing. Fall is up. Should I use Smart ASS? Probably, I mean, I can't imagine that I could have, I, I don't know what happened though. Why did it deviate at all? Too much lift? Interesting. Alright, let's go. Okay, saw boosters away. Yeah, I guess it'll be... well, I don't know. Tough to decide whether to use Smart ASS right now. I'm, I'm gonna do it manually. After we get past the atmosphere, I, I'll reconsider whether to use Smart ASS. Well, I'll tell you, improved aerodynamic failures really makes me want to design more aircraft. I'll have to look into that. This this install isn't really configured with the aircraft parts I like. Obviously, I usually I usually enjoy using B9 Aerospace and procedural dynamics, and I don't know if I'll introduce those into this at this point. I don't know what's up with Smart ASS sometimes. It looks like I was able to do this just fine. Don't speak too soon, I know, but it seems to be okay. We're going to aim for a higher orbit. Seems like the best thing to do. With the atmosphere really ending at 180 kilometers, I think uh, I think we've put the Asimov 2 in a fairly low orbit, actually.
Okay, for stage separation. And second stage ignite. Okay, looking good. Uh, those are the fairings. I guess... Ooh, is it safe to drop the fairings? <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out. Let's drop the fairings. Yes. Okay, we've got fairings. Oh, I should have put lights on. The lights would have been in the fairings. I should have put lights on this thing. At this height, I think we can extend the Commutron 32. So I'm doing that. Is it out? Can't really. Oh, there it is. I think I see it there. Okay. Oh, let's check whether we're really aiming for the same path as... Well, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Not far off at all. Okay. Oh well, Smart ASS didn't quite work out this time. Ascending node, so maybe a little bit further south will be better. Ascending node, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. That seems to be the right direction. Seems to me that this end will be the end where the Asimov 2 will catch up to us. So the part of my orbit that I actually want to extend out is the opposite side. I mean, that's just, I'm just thinking of it in those terms, I'm not too sure if that's right. Okay, well that's the second stage cut out. Okay, let's separate it. And it looks like we've still got a little bit more burning to go. Uh-oh, no connection. And we haven't quite made orbit yet. Well, so much for our, uh, our satellite network being particularly good. Ooh, with all these lines it's a little bit tough. Let's see. Who's really supposed to be in charge here? Madrid. And Madrid doesn't have a connection? How can Madrid not have a connection? I mean, Cape Canaveral's right there. Madrid should have a 12,500 kilometer range antenna. We should be able to be able to connect to Madrid. Madrid should be able to connect to Cape Canaveral. Even with this inclination issue, it shouldn't be out of line of sight. So, we seem to have a problem. Hytos 3 seems to be alright. Madrid does not seem to be. Well, the first things first, I'm going to wait until we do get a connection. Oh, there we go. We're, no, we just briefly got a connection ourselves. Like, 
right there and then it drops off. Okay. Okay, well now we're going through... Come on, really? So briefly it uh, let me go through Madrid. As long as I'm time warping it seems to think I'm connected. If I'm not time warping it doesn't seem to think that at all. Where are we? We're still going up. No, it, it does that. As long as we are connected, we have a... I mean, as long as we're time warping, we have a connection. As long as we don't time warp, we don't. We actually should have a line of sight with, uh, with this one here. I mean, I know we don't have line of sight with Cape Canaveral. Let me see what's up with Madrid for a little bit. Well, it has power. Even has hydrazine. Looks more or less intact, and it has a connection. It says it has a connection. This commutron has the 12,500 kilometer range, I thought it should. And it says it's connected to Cape Canaveral. Refueler, balls in your court. Still no connection. Let me see about this Commutron 32. Out of power. How? I can't give any commands, but there's electric charge here. It shouldn't be like a flawed amount of charge per second. I mean, it, uh, Commutron 32 sucks up quite a lot. Well, that certainly explains our problem. How about the always-on antenna? Also out of power. Um, how about the box? It has its own only 15 kilometers. Well, let's just continue. Okay, but... Okay, so... Why does it say I have a connection when I'm time warping? Like so. Very little connection. But then when I stop time warping... Oh, maybe I've got it. Nope. Nope, I don't have connection now. Is there a solution to this? How about physical time warp? If I do physical time warp... Oh, okay, physical time warp, I have a connection. Alright, well, let's take advantage of this. Very stable? Sounds good to me. I think there is some sort of power consumption issue. It's because when I time warp, it double. You know how with with time warp it increases the consumption rate. Okay, I'm gonna set it to a slightly high orbit. Okay, I hope that's good enough. Okay, so you know whenever you time warp, the consumption rate here increases. So like if I time warp right now, see it goes up like that, right? And it's because of the consumption rate that I couldn't control it. Unfortunately, I can't give commands to like extend the antenna. Uh, not the antenna, the um, solar panels. During. During. Oh wait, I'm I'm not on physical time warp. Let me try physical time warp. Uh, there we go. Now can I extend the solar panels? Yes, I can. Well. This is interesting. So we have a little bit of a problem. But let's attempt to complete the mission. And it's really Asimov 2 that has to do the the rendezvous. So let's switch to it and see if it can manage that. Note that we have the hydrazine to refill it for... So whatever hydrazine it uses, we can give it back. And also we've got hydrazine in here to deorbit this. That's why we have that hydrazine as well. 
Okay, so I think this one is in a safe orbit at least. Its inclination must be wrong by now. It's probably a few degrees off. Anyway, let's switch to Asimov 2 and see if we can plot a rendezvous. So the, the solution is probably going to be I'm going to have to up the power consumption. It, uh, the power consumption for the antenna antennae is currently set at point 2, but that's clearly the thing that's causing the problem. So I'm going to have to up the power consumption and then never look at my TDRS satellites again. Because <laughs> as soon as I jump to them, they are going to lose, uh, lose electric charge. And that's going to cause all sorts of problems. Alright, so our target is the refueler. This is going to be tricky. Uh, just out of curiosity, how, how much time does Mechjeb think that it will take me to rendezvous? Um, does it tell me? 10 hours. Okay, you know what? That can be done. Uh, we, we don't need to have that. So if we... If that's possible, that's that's pretty good. Because we've got more than 10 hours worth of time on our hands. At the next node, I'm going to... No, no. Unfortunately, it's already at the next node. Uh, I'm going to add maneuver and match, match our planes. Looks like we have to lift up. Nope. Wrong idea. That's a lot of juice. Maybe this is not what I want to do. You know what, uh, Mechjeb, you were saying something about a rendezvous that brought us within 4 kilometers. Let's get that again. Okay, in 9 hours and 37 minutes, well, we've got 22 hours. So, let's aim to do this maneuver. We will accept Jeb's suggestion and time warp. All systems look okay. Got slow drain on our electric charge, but nothing too substantial. Okay, now I think we have to figure out how to actually do this burn. The question... is... whether we light the third stage or not. Or whether we try for RCS. I don't think we can manage an RCS burn. Third stage st still says very stable. Is there something wrong with engine igniter? Because I'm pretty sure this thing should not be very stable right now. I think... I think I've got... Uh, again, updating all these mods and trying to figure things out is a little bit tricky. Um, yeah. Okay, well, uh, let's get RCS on and maneuver towards the maneuver node. And if the... If it says it's very stable, it's very stable. Okay, I'll do the rest of RCS. And hope this really gets me to within the distance that Mechjeb said it would. SAS is using RCS like it's it's nothing. Looking at how slow we're accelerating and decelerating, this is gonna be very difficult docking. Okay, well the maneuver node has been fulfilled. How about the reality of it. 
12 kilometers. Well, can we, let's see if we can adjust that right here. Somehow just turning myself has increased the uh, separation at our intersect point by quite a lot, two kilometers. Okay. Trying to fix that now. Well, I seem to have gotten it to 3.5. 3.5 kilometers. Let's let's get to it then. Oh no, 3.7. Go figure. Okay, I better time warp now. Before the separation grows any further. How much delta V are we gonna have to burn off? 378. Well, it's a lot. Even more than that. Where are you? You are over there. Let's turn on RCS and turn towards the retrograde vector and we are gonna have to try and relight this third stage yet again. So will we need to use these rockets or will it be satisfied with all our spinning around? Looks like it's very stable. Separation 3.7 kilometers. So we'll wait till we're with we'll definitely wait till we're within 10 kilometers. And then we'll start this burn. I think I should stop SAS from using any more of that. Let's time up a little bit. Okay. Uh, oh, very unstable now. Uh-oh. Uh, think quick. Let's get two of these out. And let's get RCS to stabilize. And fire. Ugh, I hate my weapons. Can't see my target anymore. Oh, there it is. Okay, good, good. 3.7, that's fine. So we didn't drift off too much. Okay, well, it looks like there's some some calculation for knowledge, so, so we do have to sell down the fuel flow, and we did that just now successfully. Having rather a lot of trouble controlling this. Okay, I think a uh, separation of 1.2 kilometers in 6 minutes is pretty good and I don't want to go beyond 8 meters per second right now. Okay. Let me just take it from this view to make sure I don't pass the point. Ooh, time warp is bad. Time warp plus lag is very, very dangerous. Okay, I'm bringing it pretty close now. So we're at 1.2 kilometers, the speed is 0.5 meters per second relative to the target. And let me bring the prograde marker towards the target. Let 
Okay, I, I honestly think I'd rather have Mech Jeb than SAS keeping me stable at this point. SAS has been doing a very poor job altogether. So target, uh, positive target. Uh, no. You may use RCS. Always dangerous to let Mech Jeb use RCS, but we need to take care of matters here. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Some reason RCS ports. I think it's because I've got three RCS ports on the pod instead of four. It's just not liking me. Okay, I'm gonna jump to the refueler and see if I can just orient it properly. Okay, here we are at the refueler, and by some miracle, it actually thinks it's connected. These days, you never know. Now, if I can find... Asimov 2, that would be helpful. Is it towards the planet? Really can't... oh, there it is. Alright. Okay, and while we still have any sort of connection, let's turn on RCS and point towards target. And I'll just let Smart uh, ASS do it because it is going to. Well, I don't know. Is it actually doing anything? Okay, yeah, I think so. Is it? Let me try and get. Oh, there we go. Where are your S... Let me see. I guess it's because the tank is white, I can't really see it's... Oh no, it's using its reaction wheel. It has a reaction wheel. How lucky. Maybe these ports aren't uh, configured for hydrazine? I can't imagine why. But they don't seem to be firing. I am pressing the button for it. There's no time warping. Oh well. I guess the RCS on this side will not be functional. What's it connecting through? I think it might just be connecting through Asimov 2 itself. Doesn't look like it has any other connection lines. Oh, that's because the box, the cube, this thing, has a 15 kilometer omni range, and we are within 15 kilometers. I see. Okay, well, it doesn't look like we can adjust anything from here. RCS is not really operational. Maybe it's the time delay, but no, I was pretty much uh, firing pressing H the whole time. Not H, uh, it was K because I wanted to pull the prograde vector up. Okay. Let's uh, switch back to Asimov 2. This thing seems to be decent. I like that these days it preserves our target. Yeah, something about my RCS configuration must be messed up. There are more ports that are firing right now than probably should be firing. Okay, we're all lined up. 0.4 meters per second is gonna take a while to get in there. And I don't... well, let me just show you the problem I have. And I'd rather be perfectly lined up when I do. Alright, so let's say I time up a little bit. Look at where the cursor jumps to. 
prograde vector all the way over there suddenly. Why? And then, when I turn off time warp, aha! A little burst of my solid fuel boosters gives me about 0.2 meters per second of extra speed. Uh, I can't shut down the solid rocket boosters, and they're just sort of hanging out there. And it takes a long time to actually burn off that 0.2 meters per second of speed. So, yeah, it's very annoying to, first of all, have the marker go off and then suddenly have this weird burst of speed. So that's why I'm not time warping as much, making this rather the most tedious, tedious uh, encounter I've ever had to do. Especially because it's in the dark and I forgot lights on the other one. I couldn't put lights on this one because they wouldn't fit. Also, SAS and Smart ASS both seem to want to make my pro grade marker drift and so turning off SAS seems to... well no, the, the, uh, anytime I try and fire the RCS thing the pro grade marker tends to drift it's just... No, I, I am my no easy way to keep it where I want it to be it's a little bit easier when I'm going slow. So, the long and short of it is it's going to be a long wait for Camden Kerman and me. And I'll see you once we get closer. Why isn't Smart ASS pointing at the target? I sure hope I've got this right. Okay, far is in the way. It's looking okay, but I it's still every time I I have to keep my finger on the RCS to make sure everything is alright, otherwise it'll drift. Using a lot of RCS because of this. There it goes. Okay. Off. Oh, totally off. RCS off. Okay, folks. Oh, it's been a tough, tough time. But we finally made it. Let's transfer the fuel as planned. I, I'll... I won't necessarily conduct the mission as planned. We'll see. We'll see whether I decide to bring bring Camden all the way over to the moon in the next episode because this episode I don't know how long the runtime will be but it sure has taken long in terms of my own uh, real lifetime okay so all full on this this side very nice and let's top off the hydrazine as well while we're at it shouldn't be uh, Shouldn't be a problem, and we'll need it for maneuvering because this doesn't have a reaction wheel. So, our first Earth orbit rendezvous in Realism Overhaul, at least this series. Obviously, I've done it uh, with the shuttle and the space station in my 200th uh, KSP video, but that was substantially easier because the reaction power of the shuttle is quite. I put a lot of reaction wheels in that thing. So. That wasn't as much of a problem. Let's not waste anything. After all, the, this portion, the target, is going to be descending through the atmosphere and breaking apart, so 
Anything we can transfer, we should. Okay, I think all the best parts are spoken for. Indeed. Alright, so here's the decoupling. I think we're all okay. Oh, not exactly the way I wanted it to go, but... Alright, so this allows us to retain the food and well, oxygen. And water. So now he has 20 days worth for a potential moon mission. And a full second stage. Uh, though only... well, it says very stable now, but... Uh, I don't know if the RCS is really going to be enough to help uh, do Ullage, so it really only has one relight, and that's thanks to these, this little pair of sod rocket boosters. Okay, but before I do anything else, let's deorbit this. Oh, what is red? What the heck is that? What are those? Looks like something we should explore if they're really out there, or I don't know if they're really out there or a graphical glitch. Okay, well, no. Uh, what is going on here? Oh. No, no. This this has the probe core. Oh, I've, I've I'm focused on the sep <laughs> the separator. Okay. Um. Yeah. There we go. Still has uh, connection still has those lines wonder what that's about so uh, we don't want to be uh, in the target we want orbit and we want to turn around did is the reaction wheel on the other part oh I think the reaction wheel is on the other part does that mean we can't deorbit this thing hmm Because for some reason these these RCS ports don't function. Very annoying. Okay, well I think we're just gonna have to leave this in space. Because if it was already pointing at its retrograde vector, that would be fine. But unfortunately, I what is okay? Yeah, the reaction wheel is actually on the portion that I've given to the Asimov too. A bit of bad planning there, but I didn't expect that the RCS ports wouldn't work. I thought we would be able to use the RCS ports. In fact, they were necessary to do the retro burn. Well, I guess this, this could have done the retro burn too, if we could uh, point in the right direction. I don't know, does MechJib think it can eventually get us pointed in the right direction? Let's see if we can move however slowly. Yeah, we seem to be turning a bit. Very, very slowly. So maybe there's a chance. And we'll try and light this engine in order to do the retro burn. Oh, no, we can't. We can't light this engine because the solid fuel and oxidizer are transferred all of it into the other vehicle and without the hydrazine. Yep. Okay, so this is futile. Alright, so this thing is going to remain in orbit. And we did not succeed in developing a good way to deorbit it. Oh, well. There's also the issue of the connectivity. Obviously we need to fix that and I guess I'll have to up the the power consumption I think that's the issue that we're facing okay but here's Camden Kerman all fueled up with more than enough fuel to get to the moon and probably back um, I don't know if it's his heat shielding is all that great but but I think it's a possibility that it'll work out 
Yeah, so we'll look into that in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you for watching. And if you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.